What, what's up everybody, PitRocks56 here, and welcome to Every Chowder Season 2 Episode Reviewed! I've been wanting to talk about this season ever since I got started on my Season 1 review. Now, it's my chance. Because this season is where Chowder starts to get interesting. Like, really. Another reason is because there are 8 episodes that I want to discuss with you guys with. Because... I've got something to say about these episodes. So, without further ado, let's cut it out with the short introduction and jump right in, shall we? Episode 21A, Panini for President. When Panini declares herself as the new president of the Apprentices Society, Gorgonzola through Chowder ends up competing against her the title. What a great way to start the season, am I right? An episode that has nothing to do with Monk's Carrying Company. My favorite part of the episode? Chowder obeying to Master Lollipop, Master Pizza, Master Um, who is Gorgonzola's hand. It's really funny. I love it. There are other good jokes that worked, like Chowder and Gorgonzola's plans to make Penny look bad or win president. They're clever and funny. There's also Gorgonzola's funny line, which is, You'll never take me alive, copper! Oh, and Panini's sad, fake crying acting was also funny. At first, it may look a little mean-spirited, but when Savije comes in and starts telling Panini if she's okay, she says to him, I'm okay, now go and let me finish my moment. Which means this is all a fake. But if you don't take it as a fake, then at least Chowder tells her to not cry. Chowder still cares for her, which is kind of a callback to the Bruce Blue Nana. And for all those reasons, I would consider it a good episode. The episode is really fun to watch thanks to the hilarious jokes here and the attempts as well. Oh, and don't forget Masters Pizza, Lollipop, and Um. Moving right along to episode 21B, Chowder's Babysitter. While babysitting Chowder, Gazpacho believes he has accidentally killed Chowder. This episode pretty much feels like Chowder's own version of Hocus Pocus from season 4. But is it better than Hocus Pocus? Actually, yes, it is. What I really love about this episode is that, unlike Hocus Pocus, the plot feels like an adventure plot. It's exciting to watch and it's actually funny. The adventure in Endive's bathroom is really funny and exciting to watch that it's the highlight of the episode. I mean sure we know that Chowder is not dead the entire time, but there's enough jokes to let it slide. It's not average or disgusting, it is a good episode. definitely one of the best episodes of season 2. It's not in my top 5, but it's still one of the best overall. Oh, episode 22A, The Fire Breather. After Chowder eats a group of hot peppers, he runs away to go live with dragons. I was originally going to give this one an average because of the annoying fart fire jokes in the middle of the episode and for it being a little bland, but when I watched it again, oh my god. Boy was I wrong about the episode being average. It is a good episode. This episode is so funny in the beginning and the middle and the ending too. It's just so funny. Especially Chowder's voiceover when he writes his letters. What makes it funny is that Chowder's handwriting is horrible and we get to hear the voiceover of Chowder's voice and Mung says that his handwriting is horrible but he can at least hear the voiceover. Oh, and the montage of Chowder with the dragons is nice and fun to watch. Oh, and the whole fart fire jokes in the middle of the episode, there's only like three of them and they're actually a little bit skippable. So, yeah, overall, really, really good episode. Poopa! Episode 22B, The Flying Flinker Lincolns. While helping Mung make a giant bread bowl for a traveling circus troupe, Chowder becomes obsessed with being a member of the Flying Flinker Lincolns and runs away to join them. Boy, what a description. Here's some trivia for you, and it's a weird one. In this episode, Chowder wanted Monk's head to explode, but in the season 1 disgusting episode, The Broken Part, Chowder did not want Monk's head to explode. I find it funny how this show does not have that much of good continuity, and so does Spongebob, and this show was made by a pre-movie Spongebob worker. 
Weird, right? My favorite part? Chowder treating his membership seriously like if it's his destiny. It's actually really funny. So is it a good, good act or a bad act? It's a good episode. The plot's a lot of fun, especially the middle of the episode, in addition to some good funny gags here and there. It's a fun one. Episode 23A, The Garage Sale. Chowder starts eating his stuff sold at Mong's Garage Sale. By the way, Chowder has hoarding problems in this episode. As seen here, Chowder was not willing to give up all of his stuff. Weird, right? Anyway, the plot sounds a little bit weird and stupid, actually. Chowder eats all of the stuff in the garage sale and wants to protect them. Just sounds a little stupid. But no. In the episode, it's actually really funny and entertaining. I love how Chowder starts eating all the stuff in the episode. Even all the characters. Some of the characters for some reason. It kind of works. But is it delicious or average? It is a good episode. Just like the fire breather, the plot is a lot of fun to watch in addition to some good gags here and there. Episode 23B, The Aborians. Mong Chowder and Schnitzel need a special syrup from an annoying tree in order to complete a pancake recipe. Guess what kids, another continuity error, yay! In this episode, Chowder says it takes Mong 7 or 8 days to pee, but later in a certain upcoming good episode in this season, he says it takes a good 3 hours. Why do the writers want to make these er continuity errors? I'll never know. Anyway, my favorite part of the episode is Mung's skeleton, where Chowder thinks Mung is dead in a locker, but Mung actually made the skeleton and he said that was just a gag, he claimed. It was absolutely funny. So, is it a bad episode or a good episode? It is definitely a good episode. The Aborian trees are fun to watch and are absolutely hilarious, especially that annoying Aborian tree has a family that has the same name and that's a boar. It's stupid, but it's stupid in a funny way. Oh, and that ending made sense because Miss Endive was a little bit of a jerk in this episode by not even helping Mung about this Aborian tree situation, so at least she got punished by the end of the episode. It's a really fun, solid episode overall. Ho ho ho, get ready kids, cause it's time for episode 24. Hey hey, it's Kanishmas. Chowder worries he won't receive the gift he wants on Kanishmas when he sees Mung attempt to make a perfect schmincher bread house and fail several times. Since this is a Christmas episode, the episode itself might feel a little repetitious with the whole you need to have the same opinion on Christmas or Christmas Carol or something, blah de blah de blah. I'm looking at you, happy holidays, Mr. Grumpfish and Doris Christmas Carol. Oi, such terrible specials. Anyway, this special's plot is actually way different than some other Christmas stories. And did they do a good job? Hell yes! If you look at this special as a parody of some stupid Christmas specials who take nothing, and I mean nothing, seriously, then it's absolutely funny and clever. But if it's not a parody, then it's still really, really funny and really nice to watch. I love this special so much. It is definitely a good episode. This is, in my opinion, one of the best episodes of the entire series because all of the gags, all of the gags in the episode were really funny and clever, just like the purple nurple stand. It's just amazing, and the story is actually both funny and sweet at the same time. What I love about the story is that it tells the most heartwarming story that can ever be told in an episode of Chowder. If Spongebob can do it with Christmas Who, then Chowder can do it with this one. If you guys want Christmas specials that aren't these piece of crap specials, then check out Christmas Who and this one, because they are both amazing, awesome episodes. 
Episode 25A, Chowder's Catering Company. Against Mung's wishes, Chowder secretly starts his own catering company for a bunch of trash-dwelling vermins. This story is pretty interesting, I suppose. Since Mung has a catering company, Chowder now has his own, but it's just for small creatures. Did they even handle the plot well? Actually, yes. I mean, sure, the episode is not that funny, but there's still a few alright jokes. My favorite joke in the in this episode is when Chowder says, Pretty please. He looks and sounds like a woman when he says that. In fact, he almost sounds like Miss Bellum from the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, and by the way, there are many references to that show in here. And heck, even its creator Craig McCracken has written an episode of Chowder, and it's in season 3. So, yeah, if you guys are trying to marathon every episode of this show, you better get used to these references, because to me, they are really funny. So yeah, anyway, it's a good episode. The plot's a lot of fun and interesting, with the addition to some good solid funny gags here and there. Wazam! Episode 25B, The Catchphrase! When a celebrity chef takes Marzipan City by storm, and with the admiration of Chowder from Mung, Mung must come up with a catchphrase to win back Chowder's adoration. What I find weird about this episode is that Chowder says that everyone has a catchphrase except for Mung, which is fucking stupid because his catchphrase is ladies. So really, it just makes this episode pointless. But however, this pointless episode is actually funny and nice and fun to watch. I really like the gags about Mung trying to find a catchphrase, and I love how Chowder, even though he loves that celebrity chef a little more because of the catchphrase, he is still on Mung's side, and he actually wants to help him. I like that. Chowder loves the chef because of the catchphrase, but he is still on Mung's side. Oh, and Mung's angry catchphrase at the end was funny too. Even though the episode is not as good as the other episodes of this season and the entire series in general, I am still going to call it a good episode. Well, what do you know? A pointless episode that's actually good. Now that's something you don't see every day. Oh, ladies. Episode 26A, The Hot Date. Sergeant Hulky prepares to go on a blonde date, but first must first deal with a crime committed at Miss Endai's swimming pool caused by herself. Fun fact, this is one of the few times Endai and Schnitzel's relationship is shown, because get it, they're both big and strong. What the heck. Anyway, the highlight of this episode is Miss Bellum's cameo appearance. When Sergeant Hokey tells everyone, even his cops, to get out of the diner, he becomes depressed, and then Miss Bellum comes out of nowhere and tells him she is looking for a blind date, because, get it, you can't see her face at all. You know, get it? Powerpuff Girls and Chowder are both weird. Anyway, I like it because it's really funny, and it actually makes sense. Miss Bellum's blind date's face is not shown either, so the joke really works. Oh, and the joke brings back memories to the cameo appearances of other cartoon characters in Billy and Mandy, which ironically ended last year before this episode came on. Weird, right? So, is this date acceptable or unacceptable? I would totally date this episode, aka, it is a good episode. It's really fun, funny to watch, and since the story is actually a heartwarming one, and since Surgeon Hokey gets a happy ending in this episode, really makes this one a fantastic one. It's not as good as Hey Hey, it's Kanishmas, but it's still a great episode nonetheless. Yo, episode 26B, Shopping Spree. When Truffles become sick, Mung, Chowder, and Schnitzel are left in charge of the company's money box. My favorite part of the episode is, no money means no animation. It was so funny that I laughed at it, because we get to see all the voice actors here. Nikki Jones, the voice of Chowder, Dwight Schultz, the voice of Mung, Tara Strong, the voice of Truffles, who also voices Twilight Sparkle from Milo Pony Furniture, by the way, and John DiMaggio, the voice of Schnitzel. 
which leads me to the fun fact there. Terra Strong is in there, and it's stupid because Terra is basically troubles in real life. She is not supposed to know that the others spent the money. Oh, and some people might complain about all the live action in Cartoon Network, in which I did in the past, but now I realize that even though it doesn't make any sense, here's the thing. Remember Space Ghost Coast to Coast? There's live action in it, and it was on Cartoon Network before. It was on Adult Swim. Did you guys complain? Nope. When Looney Tunes was shown on Cartoon Network on the past and now, there was one episode that showed a live action segment, and that was probably the 1940s or something. Did you guys complain? No. Even though it makes no sense at all, it's still there, and you guys have to deal with it. So yes, anyway, this is a good episode. It's really funny, and fun, and interesting to watch. At least Chowder, Mung, and Schnitzel learned their lesson at the end. All aboard! Episode 27A, The Party Cruise. Mung takes Chowder and Schnitzel to go fishing, but end up on a cruise ship falsely owned by Reuben. This is the third time Reuben appears, and this is the second time where he is a villain. However, in here, he's not as good as he was in the rat sandwich. But however, he is an okay villain here. My favorite part of the episode, the twist ending where some captain owns that ship was actually a ship that Reuben stole. And the fact that the captain looks like someone from some 1940s comic book with some 1940s comic book animation is really funny and really cool to see. So, was this episode a good ride or a bad ride? Actually, it's a meh ride. Yeah, I am not crazy about this one, guys. My main problem with this episode is that it's really hard to be on Mung's side or not be on his side. Because here's the thing, Mung is a real jerk in this episode by telling Chowder and Schnitzel to fish because that's what real men do. Don't get me wrong, men can fish whatever they want because, hey, it's a relaxing experience. But if you say that we are going fishing because that's what real men do and try to act like real men, not because of relaxation, then it's incredibly odd, stupid, and mean-spirited. But when Chowder and Schnitzel leave Mung just to hang out with other people on the ship, Mung fishes on his own. But later in the episode, so much is going on that it's driving Mung crazy and frustrated. All the noise and stuff. And despite the fact that he was a jerk, it's actually really sad. All he wanted was to fish. That's it. Nothing else. But a lot of people here just ruin Mung's fun beyond belief in ways that are just not even funny. So yeah, this episode in a nutshell, it's among torture porn, but at the same time, it's not. If you mix a torture episode and a typical no torture episode together, you get this episode. Don't get me wrong, this episode has a few jokes that work, but overall, not only is it frustrating, it's also pretty bland and forgettable. It was a little bit close to good, but nope, it's meh. Episode 27B, One Tom Bombs, when Mung's old master comes to visit and tells the story of, about Mung's greatest failure to all of Marzipan City, Chowder and Mung travel back to the past to fix his failure. I like this episode a lot, it shows us what Mung looks like in the past and how he was interested in the 80s back in the day. It's a very clever and fun experience. And there are a few jokes that worked. I like the joke where Chowder and Mung travel back in time by a dream cloud. If you don't know what these are, they are, you know, the clouds where if a cartoon character dreams, there's going to be a cloud on top of them when they dream of something. It's actually really funny. So yes, it is a good episode. There's not much to say, really. It's just a really fun and hilarious ride, with the addition of good, some good funny gags here and there. 
Alright guys, I am ready to join episode 28A, The Big Hat Biddies. Truffles tries to impress the members of the Big Hat Biddies, and the others try to help by making a big face for the club. This is the first episode with no trivia, because really, are there any references or anything at all in this one? Anyway, my favorite part of the episode is how Chowder, Mung, and Schnitzel, and Gazpacho screws up the feast. It's actually really funny and awesome. Especially Chowder dressed up as a dancer guy and ask out a sandwich for a date or something. I don't know why, but that scene right there is just awesome. Just awesome. And hey, at least Chowder does not date the sandwich at all and just says if the sandwich wants to dance, but then he just rejects her or something. So, am I part of the club or not part of the club? Although, the group members in this episode are actually villains at the end, so... I guess I don't want to join the group. <laughs> anyway, it's a good episode, guys. It's really funny and fun, and the ending is awesome, too. I love how Truffles defends Mung from the group members because they all acted like assholes to Mung because of the screw-ups, which shows that Mung and Truffles love each other that much. This episode is just nothing but a fun and clever ride. Get ready to be scared, guys, because it's time for episode 28B, The Deadly Maze. Deadly Maze. Deadly maze, deadly maze. Mung's old apprentice Gumbo traps Chowder within a huge maze so he can get rid of Mung. The character Gumbo in this episode is really funny and fun to watch. And what I also love about him is that he, he's just like Chowder. He is also a cat, bear, rabbit creature. In fact, he wears the same clothes as Chowder, but it's orange instead of purple. And he has a mustache, and he has a big nose. His actions in this episode are really funny and fantastic. It's just... Wow. Anyway, the highlight of this episode is the Minotaur or something, who is the CGI baby of Jeffrey, who does creepy dances, and it's really, really funny, and actually really disturbing, in a clever, funny way. Trust me, you're going to get creeped out by this, and yet still laugh at it. Oh, and if you don't know who Jeffrey is, he is the bird that works for Gumbo in the Deadly Maze. He is a yellow bird with a shirtless man body. In fact, the picture I'm showing you is Jeffrey's head. Anyway, is this maze deadly or exciting? Or is it actually deadly in a good way? Then again, I might die in the Deadly Maze. <laughs> it's a good episode, guys! This episode is fantastic and really fun to watch that it is definitely part of my top 5. It is just so wonderful. Almost everything about this episode works. It's clever. It's fun. It's funny. I mean, what else could you ask for in an episode of Chowder? I mean, sure, the reason why Gumbo quit Mung was stupid and at the end Mung got quote unquote tortured. But however, at the end of the episode, Gumbo no, no longer wants to get rid of him, but instead give him something that is not even torture at all, and it's just creepy, and that's it. So yeah, I think it's pretty much safe to say that Gumbo has learned this lesson. It's just a fantastic episode that isn't annoying or mean-spirited. I hope you students are studying for episode 29A, the BLTs. When Chowder must pass the upcoming BLTs, Mung is forced to take matters into his own hands and attempt to stop the test. There are many weird things about this episode. Like at the end of the episode, Chestnut says to Mung that he is going to finish the test even though he did many years ago, which doesn't make any sense really. Oh, and there's a gag where Chowder draws himself and a unicorn on the test and they both start talking about failing the test. It's weird, but it's weird in a really funny way. Also, Mung's cross-dressing attempts from the purple nurple stand returns, and it's actually portrayed really good here. It really reminds me of that episode, and that's a good thing too. Oh, and the ending where all of this was Chestnut's homework the entire time is actually really weird, but still funny at the same time. So, did this episode pass or not? This episode definitely passed. It is a good episode. 
it's a re really weird one, but I don't care because the weirdness in this episode really works. So yes, this episode passed the episode test. It gets an A+. I mean, it's not part of my top, top 5 or anything, but it still gets an A+, nonetheless. I hope you students are studying for episode 29A, the BLTs. When Chowder must pass the upcoming BLTs, Mung is forced to take her matters into his own hands and attempt to stop the test. There are many weird things about this episode. Like, at the end of the episode, Chestnut says to Mung that he is going to finish the test even though he did many years ago, which doesn't make any sense really. Oh, and there's a gag where Chowder draws himself and a unicorn on the test, and they both start talking about failing the test. It's weird, but it's weird in a really funny way. Also, Mung's cross-dressing attempts from the purple nurple stand returns, and it's actually portrayed really good here. It really reminds me of that episode, and that's a good thing too. Oh, and the ending where all of this was Chestnut's homework the entire time is actually really weird, but still funny at the same time. So, did this episode pass or not? This episode definitely passed. It is a good episode. It's a re really weird one, but I don't care because the weirdness in this episode really works. So yes, this episode passed the episode test. It gets an A+. I mean, it's not part of my top, top 5 or anything, but it still gets an A+, nonetheless. Episode 29B, The Trouble with Truffles. Truffles gets a new voice after Mung tells her that her old one scares customers away. Here's some trivia for you. This episode's title could could be based off of the Star Trek episode, The Trouble with Triples. Although Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends would do a reference to that episode too, but just the title and that's it. Oh, and see this picture? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hint, hint. Anyway, my favorite part of the episode is Schnitzel being so calm. I love what Schnitzel sounds like without saying rada rada. It really sounds like what Schnitzel would sound like if he talks. What I also really love about this episode is how Mung, Chowder, and Schnitzel become cavemen when Truffles' voice becomes so calm. It's actually really funny and just exciting at the same time. So is it a good episode or a bad episode? It is a delicious episode, which translates to a good episode. It's a very fun episode with so many gags that really work so well. There's only one thing that I don't like about it. The ending, where people no longer have to listen to Truffles' old loud voice by putting on headphones while not listening to what Truffles says about their order. It's just really stupid and actually not that funny but despite that this is a really funny and exciting episode there's not much to say really episode 30 the dinner theater low on money mung and truffles decide to start a dinner theater this is the last special of season two by the way anyway the specials plot is actually not so bad i really like the idea of mung's catering company hosting a dinner theater because I'm sure that the play would be an interesting parody of something, or it would be an interesting original story, or maybe there could be no play until the ending, but just have so many funny jokes by setting up the play. Now, what do I think of this episode as a whole? To tell you the truth guys, this special is annoying. Really, really annoying. There are not so many funny jokes that worked. I mean, there were some that worked. I like the part where Savije goes crazy about Pinini's fake death. That was pretty funny. But aside from that, this episode is just stupid. They, they did not have any fun, nor did they have any imagination with this one at all. Because the way Chowder acts in this episode reminds me of something. Yeah, Chowder being so stupid that he can't even remember what anyone said for like 20 seconds, which shows that sometimes he is brain dead even though that is not supposed to be his character. Sound familiar? Yeah, this episode is pretty much the broken part if it takes place in a theater. And honestly, this episode is even worse. 
before I say more about this episode, I am going to call it, right now, a DISGUSTING EPISODE. Chowder is so stupid by the fact that he actually believes that he himself is dead by Gazpacho's character in the episode, and he thinks that he's actually Sherlock Honeycombs. It's just stupid. I mean, sure, there's Chowder's babysitter, which I consider it a good episode. But again, Chowder is so trusting to some people, even Gazpacho, that he's willing to believe everything they say. In here, Chowder thinks Gazpacho is actually the character he is playing and not the real Gazpacho, even though it actually is Gazpacho. Seriously, writers, Chowder was not that retarded to begin with. And speaking of Gazpacho, if he's not if he's noticing the fact that Chowder is believing that he is actually the villain, why didn't he just stop acting like him in the first place so that Chowder would not be a gullible idiot in this episode? And man, was Chowder an unlikable asshole in this episode. At the beginning of the episode, when Panini was acting for like three seconds, Chowder already throwed a tomato at her, and Panini starts crying like she was in fucking tears. I get it, Chowder. You don't like being her boyfriend, but you didn't have to be mean to her. That's fucking bullshit. Oh, and this episode is not that funny at all. It's a shame because the special could have been good, but as it stands, it's a bad episode. However, just like the broken part, it actually is tolerable. There are some nice things to see here, like the actings of the characters and Ceviche being his funny self himself, but that's it. Overall, if Chowder wasn't so stupid or unlikable, I would have given it the meh, or maybe even good episode. But nope, it's bad, end of story. It's just so stupid and boring that it really does it really didn't need to exist at all. If you thought Dinner Theater was bad enough, the very next episode is episode 31A, Kid Schnitzel. Schnitzel tires of his adult responsibilities and decides to act like a child. This episode is the first episode of the entire series in which many fans seem to hate. First, let's start with the positives. The plot itself is actually pretty good. Me Schnitzel gets tired of being an adult and starts becoming a child. That's a great idea for a plot. It's not actually bad at all. And there was one joke that actually did get a hearty laugh out of me, which is the Schnitzel stepping on thrice green whatever he comes back to work gag. It actually does make me laugh, but everything else just goes downhill immediately. In other words, we're going to the negatives of this. First off, what Mung says about Chowder being a kid so it's okay for him to do all these things really pisses me off. Mung in this episode is a prime example of a stupid parent who uses that excuse to make little kids do stupid things. Stupid things that would even get us all killed. I mean, not all, just some. In here, Chowder doing all these childish actions in this episode would have killed Mung and the rest of the people in the company. And now he's saying he's just a kid? Bullshit! Just because he's a kid doesn't mean he has the right to do stupid things that would kill someone or some pet. This is fucking bullshit! The part where Schnitzel starts acting like a baby, even Chowder, is just plain creepy. Now here is where the episode becomes really awful. The part where Chowder and Schnitzel go to a baby pound, which is obviously a mean-spirited parody of a dog pound, is really disgusting and so disturbing as well. Like, really? A baby pound? What the heck, guys? But this part is the worst. The Wharton in this episode is HORRENDOUS! She is really creepy in this episode. She is so huge, and when Schnitzel tries to escape her, she starts getting a SCISSOR for no reason. WHY? JUST WHY? Why the fuck did she pull out scissors to begin with? Was she trying to cut the diapers? Or was she trying to... No. No, 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 no. She can't be that stupid, am I right? Right? And then we found out that all the babies in the pound are actually adults. It's just gross. This episode is so stupid, creepy, and horrendous. This fucking episode had made me so angry and frustrated. If a great episode has a bad episode that can make me so mad, it's fucking fucked up. If this episode wasn't so fucked up or creepy, it would have gotten the meh. But no, it's a fucking disgusting episode. Why the fuck did this episode exist? Why? Just why? Ugh! 
overall, this is the first episode that belongs in the animated atrocity trash. <laughs> it's not the worst episode of the show, but it's still so bad. Washa, episode 31B, Gazpacho fights back when an intimidating woman bullies Gazpacho into giving her free produce. He and Kuchowda must think of a way to fight back by going to the strongest person they know. In this episode, the fourth wall was broken once again. It breaks when Chowder sees Rosemary, the bully, laying eggs. He says, I thought this was a kid's show. It's a really funny joke that actually works. And judging what Chowder sh said in here, I feel like it, it's a dirty joke. Anyway, the highlight of the episode is Gazpacho and Chowder's ways of trying to fight back. They are really funny attempts. So, is it a good episode or a bad episode? Well, it's funny, I can tell you that. Funny enough for me to c consider it a good episode. It's funny, it's weird in a good way, it's just a solid fun episode. I mean sure, the ending was weird, but think about it. Rosemary was such a jerk to Gazpacho that if you are a jerk to Gazpacho so much, he will not be interested in you at all. I mean, sure, there's Helga from Hey Arnold, but if she can still follow Arnold's plans in school or something, it shows her that she is not so strong or that mean at all. Here, just full-on jerk with no nice things at all. Rosemary, I'm saying. So the ending makes sense once you think about it. Get ready for episode 32A, Big Ball. While catering at a special sports event, Truffles and Mung argue about the rules of the game, resulting in the two competing in the games. Trivia time! Bowser can be seen at the end of the episode, where he throws the stadium in a trash can. Which is also my favorite part of the episode. It's really funny, and so awesome at the same time. And after Bowser throws the stadium in the trash can, the word game over is shown on the screen. Awesome. Just awesome. So, is it a good game or a bad game? It is a good game. A good episode. It's really fun and interesting to watch, and Mung saying the full name of Big Ball is also really funny. And the full name is so long and so weird, but I still laugh at it. What else can I say? It's just fun. Episode 32B, The Brain Freeze. Chowder drinks a cool drink too fast, causing him to be frozen in a block of ice. There are some things in the episode that don't make sense, like apparently in here they do not have air conditioning in the catering company, and yet in a flashback on the hot date they had air conditioning. Hooray for more continuity errors! Yee! Anyway, I like this episode a lot. It has a lot of fun with the cold, beautiful settings and animation. And it also has fun with Chowder being in the cold place. And finally, they also have fun with the Brain Freeze version of Miss Endive. It's just a great and beautiful experience. And for all those reasons, I would consider it a good episode. It's just a fun, cold, beautiful experience. What else could you ask for in a chowder adventure? Vroom! Episode 33A, The Snail Car. Mung tries to get rid of the old car for a new car, but Chowder wants the old one back. So Mung and Chowder set up a race for their cars. To tell you the truth, there are so many things wrong here. But first, let's bring up the positives. Some funny gags that actually work. Like the snail car was driving through a painting and it got ruined. Like if the background actually changed. But no, it's just the painting. That one was really funny. I also like the race. And it's also my favorite part. Now let's get to the real problems of this episode. First off, Mung is such a jerk to the old one. I mean, when the car is actually broken, he wants to get rid of it immediately. He takes her to the place where all broken snail cars get smashed so hard and they die. And snail cars actually move and make noises. They are living cars for Pete's sake. And really, that's pretty harsh. If they are not working anymore, then at least take care of her like if she's her own pet. 
that snail car, not destroy her. That is just mean spirited at its finest. The snail car's name is Asgard God, by the way. Oh, and the new snail car is also mean spirited. But however, at the end of the episode where he gets blown up, even though he was a jerk, he did not even deserve to die at all. So, really, this episode is nothing but mean spiritedness at its finest. So, yeah, it is a disgusting episode. It's mean spirited and stupid that, really, it's just there to be mean spirited for the sake of being mean spirited. Although, it actually is tolerable thanks to the awesome race. But besides that, it's just mean spirited and boring. Oh, and this episode is not even that funny at all. Like, I, I don't get it. I mean, yes, there are a few funny gags that worked, but they're not that funny. And after these gags, this episode becomes unfunny. So, yeah, move along. Episode 33B, The Lolly Stops. Chowder wrecks his teeth so he can go to the dentist who gives out lolly stops. Here it is, folks, another Chowder episode that so many fans seem to hate. And I'm one of them. In my personal opinion, this was the episode that made Chowder look like a terrible, terrible show, even though it's not. I believe this episode was the reason why people say the show had gone quote-unquote lower ratings. To give a quick recap on this episode, here goes. This episode is not funny at all. It has a really horrible and disgusting ending that will make you puke, I guess. The tooth jail makes no sense whatsoever. And finally, Chowder is really unlikable here. He just put in so many teeth in his mouth that he scares everyone in the dentist, even the dentist himself. And it shows that he doesn't care at all. I swear, when I see Chowder in this episode, I want to slap that kid square in the face and say, fuck you, and give him the middle finger. Because, just, ugh. Overall, out of all the episodes of this series, this one is my least favorite. And if you want to know why I hate this episode with more reasons, don't worry guys, I'll be making a rant on this episode. There's just not enough time to talk about it here. This episode is definitely a DISGUSTING EPISODE. And it's the worst disgusting episode ever. I hope, and I mean it this time, I hope that after I make my rant on this episode, I never have to see it again. There's no fucking excuse at all. This is a terrible, terrible episode. If you guys want to see it, the link will be in the description. It's on Daily Motion. But be warned, this episode might haunt your nightmares. Ew! Episode 34A, Endive's Dirty Secret. Mung and everyone in town blackmails Miss Endive with an embarrassing picture of her to gain access to her pool. This is one of the nicest episodes I've ever seen. It first starts off with Miss Endive being a jerk by not letting Mung, Chowder, and Schnitzel be in the pool for no reason. Then Mung starts taking a picture of Endive's embarrassing thing and tries to show it to everyone. I really like Endive's attempt to get the picture by letting Panini dress up as a hot girl so that Chowder would give her the photo. But however, Chowder doesn't get what she's talking about by hot, it's hot outside. Then she tells him to just give her the photo angry-ish and Chowder say that she should have told him that. It's just really funny and clever too. But my favorite part of the episode is the sweet ending. Chowder has a good moral this time in this episode. And it's actually really, really sweet. And at the same time, it kind of made sense. Miss Endive was a little bit of a jerk, so at least she learned her lesson. And at least she now knows that the embarrassing picture is not even embarrassing at all. Everyone has embarrassing moments. It's okay to have embarrassing moments. That is a good moral, if you think about it. So yeah, this is a solid episode. Solid enough for me to consider it a good episode. Mm. Episode 34B, Big Food. 
Mung, Chowder, and Schnitzel go on a camping trip where Chowder attempts to prove to a stubborn Mung that the legendary Bigfoot exists. Anyway, Bigfoot is a play on Bigfoot. Like if that wasn't obvious. Anyway, the highlight of this episode is Chowder talking to Schnitzel, but noises are in the background. It's a really funny gag. I just love Chowder and Schnitzel's annoyed reactions to those noises while they start talking in the campfire. So, is it a brilliant story or a horrible story? It is a brilliant story. A good episode. It's a lot of fun to watch, especially the big food character. And hey, we at least get to see Chowder helping out somebody and is actually a little mature about it. There are a few jokes that worked, but overall, this episode is nothing but a fun and mature ride. Episode 35A, Paint the Town. Fed up with Mung and everyone criticizing him for his screw-ups, Chowder paints his own world after discovering a blank canvas dimension behind his bedroom. This episode feels like a wonderland. I mean, think about it. Chowder starts painting a background and some people. It's like Chalk Zone all over again. It is just a fantastic experience. If you watch this episode, it will bring you back memories of Chalk Zone. Really, it's just like it. And Chowder's own town is actually way different than Rudy's Chalk People, even Snap, and the place Chalk Zone in general. So really, it's not a ripoff, but something that can remind you of something. But besides that, there are a lot of jokes here, and they work so well. Is Chowder a bit of a jerk here? Maybe, but at least he learns his lesson at the end, and at least he was trying to help Mung, Truffles, and Schnitzel from the townspeople. The only thing I don't like about the episode is the ending, where Chowder tries to find something to get Mung, Truffles, and Schnitzel out of there by... I guess doing something? And then the episode stops. They just left them there. That's it. It just stops. Yeah, I don't get it. Overall, this is a great episode. Not just for the funny gags, but also because of the creativity and cool looking townspeople and backgrounds. Ooh, episode 35B, The Blackout. Chowder and Gorgonzola must restore power to the city after a blackout occurs. I'm gonna be 100% honest here, but this episode actually starts off pretty badly. I mean, sure, it's funny and kinda cute that Chowder loves playing with the power, but then we hear Mung and Schnitzel having annoying voices inside the big cup or something, and then Schnitzel farts for like four times. It's actually really annoying and just disgusting, but once the adventure gets started, then this episode is both really funny and really fun to watch. I just love Chowder and Gorgonzola working together because as a team, they make the episode absolutely hilarious and fun to watch. Honestly, if the team up was just serious and a little bland and not funny or that interesting, and if Chowder was just mature instead of being his old funny self with Gorgonzola, then this episode would have gotten the meh. But thanks to that awesome team up and help and the team up being so hilarious in this episode, just like in the Apprentice games, this is a good episode. So 36A, the dice cycle. Chowder breaks Mung's dicicle and blames it on Ceviche under Gazpacho's command. This is the first time Ceviche has a bigger role than Panini, which is interesting I guess. My favorite part of the episode is the 5 feet from the door gag. That was so funny that it was the highlight. Anyway, this episode is alright. Yeah, it's not fantastic or anything, but there's a few jokes that worked, especially the highlight, and the twist ending was pretty good. Oh, and Chowder and Ceviche fighting is also a little funny, and honestly, if the twist ending wasn't there, I would have called it a meh, or maybe even a disgusting episode. But no, thanks to the twist ending, the episode is pretty solid. So, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good episode, but only like if I care. 
it's not that funny, but there are just enough jokes for me to consider it a good episode. It's a good episode, but it's not that good. Episode 36B, The Chain Recipe. Mung gets cursed for a hundred years after refusing to make a chain recipe. Fun fact time, this is a reference to chain mail. Pretty great reference if you ask me. Anyway, the highlight of the episode is all the bad luck that Mung is getting. Yeah, this may be a Mung torture porn, but here's the thing. The chain recipe is the villain of the episode. Or at least I see it as the villain anyway. So it's okay and relevant to the plot. It's a very interesting and funny episode with a really cool concept. So yes, this is a good episode. There's not much to say, it's just an interesting and cool episode. Oh, beautiful! Episode 37A, The Garden. After Truffles makes the plants grow with her voice, Chowder becomes her apprentice. The plant that swallowed Chowder looks like a piranha plant from Mario, honestly. No, really, he looks like the piranha plant from Mario. If you watch this episode, he definitely does. Anyway, the highlight of the episode is the beautiful songs. They are interesting and are absolutely beautiful. So, is this a beautiful one or an ugly one? It is a beautiful one. A good episode. What I really love about this episode is that it feels like a parody to episodes of certain shows where some character becomes famous or goes away to something that is not being famous, about being famous, and then the main character becomes depressed because they miss each other, and heck, Chowder would even make that kind of plot without it being a parody in the season 3 episode, The Toots, and boy do I have a lot to say about it. Anyway, it really does feel like a parody of these type of episodes. It's actually really funny and just clever too. Monk gets upset because of Chowder being obsessed with Truffles is absolutely hilarious. But however, if this is not supposed to be a parody, then it is still funny in a so stupid it's funny way. So yeah, overall, good episode. Episode 37B, She Boodles. Longing for a companion, Miss Endive cooks a beefcake for a date. Anyway, fun fact, Panini says that Todd, the beefcake himself, taught her how to dance. But in the Apprentice games, she danced. Seriously guys, you can't keep your continuity straight for 11, for 11 minutes? Anyway, the highlight is Todd's voice. He actually sounds like Mandar from Dexter's Laboratory, one of my favorite Cartoon Network shows. In fact, it's the same voice actor, and I'm serious. I think he does a great job with Todd. So, is this a fun episode or a boring episode? I'm sorry guys, but this is a DISGUSTING EPISODE. There is a lot wrong here, and if you guys want to know why, here's the reason why. First off, even though I love Todd's voice so much, the character still pisses me off. There's just something about that guy that instantly just ma makes me not want to like him. Second, and perhaps my biggest problem is that this episode is a Miss Endai torture porn. Todd just embarrasses her in front of Mung, Paniti, etc. And Endai starts becoming annoyed and depressed. And it's actually really sad. And Todd looks like if he doesn't even care that much at all. And then after that, they start having a 1980s party or something at Endives, dressing up as people from the 80s and just dance. But then Endive is okay with Todd and a few others, I guess, but wants to make Todd look better. And then she starts doing so. Todd, when she starts doing so, Todd starts telling her that people like the way he looked. So she didn't have to do it. And then Todd starts looking better by becoming a live action version of a farmer, I guess. But then rejects and dive, even though she wasn't doing anything harsh to the guy at all. All she wanted was to make him look more good. That's it. Nothing else. But Todd just had to ruin and dive by rejecting her. And she starts becoming depressed at the end, and everyone starts starts shouting she boodles at the viewers and that's it 
overall, this is a depressing Miss Endive torture porn. It is so mean-spirited and so frustrating and boring that this actually belongs in the animated atrocity trash. Oh, and finally, this episode isn't funny at all. I really did not even laugh at this at all. I'm serious. There was no jokes in the episode at all. So, yes, moving on. What's up guys, mind if I move in? Episode 38A, Gaspacho moves in. Gaspacho leaves his mom's house and moves into the catering company over an argument. No trivia once again, because there's nothing to this episode, really. In my opinion, what makes this episode really stand out, no pun intended, is Gaspacho's clones. They are really funny, and I just love when Gaspacho sees Gaspacho, they first argue, then they start to like each other. It is so funny, and another example of how to do idiot character plot lines. The plot makes sense here. Gaspacho is a little bit of a jerk, and at least he kind of gets punished for it at the end. Besides, he was moving into the company, and because he and his mother was arguing about brushing their teeth. So, yeah, this is a good episode. <music> to me, it is the most solid episode of this season. Not the best, but the most solid. Episode 38B, My Big Fat Stinky Wedding. Chowder takes kimchi to his family's home in the swamp for an arranged marriage Boy, did I wanted to talk about this one for a long time, because it's an interesting one. Anyway, this episode is pretty much stinky love all over again, but this time, Kimchi does not fall in love, but he instead gets married. Honestly, this episode is pretty much what a bad chowder episode is in a nutshell. It's not funny, it's mean-spirited, it is gross and disgusting, and the plot holes make no sense at all. This episode did not even bother putting in so many funny jokes and making sure the story made sense and was not bland. I am so sorry, but to me, this episode is awful on so many levels, and it's about kimchi. This is the first ever kimchi episode that makes me so frustrated and angry. It is just so stupid. It is ridiculous and boring and stupid that it is just pathetic. Before I talk a little more about the episode, I'm going to call it right now a DISGUSTING EPISODE. This episode actually had potential and it actually could have been a little interesting seeing Kimchi being married and seeing Kimchi's family and heck, we get to see another cat bear rabbit creature and his name is Porridge and he looks like Chowder again, just like Gumbo, in The Deadly Maze, which is a much better episode. Anyway, the other problems with this episode is that the backstory with Mung and Little Chowder is just mean-spirited. He just leaves Chowder in the dark, cold forest while Mung sleeps in a nice, warm house. It's actually pretty harsh, and it's just child abuse in a nutshell. My final reason why I hate this episode is that this episode is a chowder torture porn. Seriously, when Chowder talked to Porridge about how he met Kimchi in the forest and then he kicks Ki Chowder out, Chowder starts becoming really upset and then we see Kimchi crying about it and then Porridge was too stupid to even realize that and just ran inside. He was just too stupid to realize that he was causing kimchi and chowder depression. It's really harsh. And there's the ending where the wife of kimchi is actually a criminal stink cloud man who wore that bag to make her look like a girl on her head for years. Porridge said that he knew it all along. Okay, then why didn't he... Why didn't he tell the family and Chowder about this in the first place? I mean, the wife was standing on the- was sitting on the chair. I mean, it's pretty obvious to just take the bag away from her now. I mean, he pretty much revealed that he works for the cops despite the fact that he's 12. This episode is just an annoying, stinky, and gross mess. 
The only things I like about the episode is Porridge's design, voice, and the alligator jokes. I actually thought they were funny, but everything else is just a mess overall. Oh, and the fact that the criminal is actually a man will haunt my nightmares. Episode 39A, Apprentice Appreciation Day. Mung and Miss Endive compete over who throws the best Apprentice Appreciation Day party, of alienating Chowder and Panini in the process. Trivia time! When Chowder and Panini were sitting at the dock, it is similar to the Spongebob episode, New Leaf. Yeah, remember that episode from Pie Guy Rules' Season 4 of Spongebob Review? It's quite surprising that he calls it a Scumbob episode. Eh. Anyway, my favorite part of the episode is Fake Chowder. I fucking love that gag so much. It just works so well. So, is it good or bad? It is a good episode. It's really funny and interesting. And hey, at least Mung learns his lesson at the end. Some people might think that Chowder is a bit of a jerk here, but really, think about it. Mung thinks that Chowder is so special that he just doesn't need to listen to Chowder. At least that's what he thinks anyway. And just throws parties anyway. And Chowder says that he is not even that much of a party dude, and thought that Mung didn't need to do all of this. So it's okay. This episode is just a really fun and funny episode that has a really solid plot. Episode 39B, The Great Worm. A parasite moves into Chowder's stomach, driving away Chowder's friends. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that people don't talk about this episode more, because it's a little bit interesting. The Great Worm, who is called Jam, lives in Chowder's belly button, and he also goes around Chowder's stomach at one point, even his heart. Wouldn't Chowder die because the worm looked because the worm looked like he was being on Chowder's heart in a little roughly way? And this episode is not even about plastic surgery or something. Also, I hate to sound disgusting, but if someone touches their belly button, would they even feel their blood or bones? No, because their button is closed, so you shouldn't feel your blood or bones or something. I know it's a cartoon, but if you just think about it, it's just plain creepy. But enough of that, my main problem with this episode is that Jam is such an asshole in this episode. This is what happens if you take an annoying stupor, stupid hipster wannabe girl in your classroom, trust me, I had one in the 7th grade, and you put her in a cartoon, but change her gender into a male, and give him a mustache, and turn him into a worm, and you get Jam the Worm. Jam in this episode did some mean-spirited things to Chowder by letting him not be with his friends like Gazpacho, or let him go to the bathroom to poop or something, or even eat some thrice cream. It's just harsh. I mean, it's not as harsh as Chowder and Mr. Fugu, but it's still pretty harsh nonetheless. Oh, and this episode's ending is the worst part of this episode. Jam did not even learn his lesson at all after he got out of Chowder's belly button, and yet they start acting sad to each other like if they will miss each other. It's the worst part because Jam did not even learn his lesson at all, and Chowder is going to miss him even though Jam did horrendous things to him. Look guys, if you want to make a, an ending where a jerk character misses the really likable character and goes away, fine. But you have to make sure that the unlikable character learns his lesson, or at least get punished for his actions and he will turn over a new leaf. But nope, he didn't learn anything. If you have a sweet ending, you have to make sure the antagonist goes over a new leaf, guys. This one's another disgusting episode. Although, unlike the debatable bad episodes of this show, like The Broken Part, The Dinner Theater, and The Snail Cart, this one was really, really close to meh. Because even though the episode has some bad qualities, it has enough good qualities to make it a meh. But nope, it's a bad episode. Because of Jam being an unlikable asshole, getting off scot-free at the end, and that, even, and that even though some of the jokes in the episode were funny, they were not that funny at all. And don't forget the fact that this episode is a little bit forgettable. 
if Jam learned his lesson at the end, and Jam was not living living in Chowder's belly button, and had instead lived in Chowder's hat, and if the episode was not a bit forgettable and a little bit more entertaining, I would have given it the meh rating. Remember what I said that the broken part was the most tolerable, disgusting episode? Looking back at this one, this one takes the title, but it's still a bad episode nonetheless. Episode 40A, Affair to Remember. Panini gets jealous of Chowder's new friend. This episode's title is a reference to the movie's title in Affair to Remember. Yeah, I don't get it at all. So anyway, this episode is really annoying. Like, seriously. This episode was not even fun, nor was it even funny at all. This episode takes the OMG, I'm jealous of new friend cliche and make it even worse. Panini is such an asshole in this episode. She treats Chowder like if he's her own son or something. It just doesn't even feel right. Just like the snail car, this episode is mean-spirited for the sake of being mean-spirited. I mean, sure, Panini apologizes at the end of the episode, but her apology seems really forced. In fact, after she says sorry, the girl Marmalade was about to say yes or no if she accepts her apology, but then Panini cuts off what she was about to say, and then she starts chasing Chowder immediately, and that's it. It just goes to show you that she did not even learn her lesson at all. There is no excuse, she is such an asshole here, in which, yeah, this episode is making Panini feel way out of character, and it's just sad. I'm sorry people, but this thing is so awful on so many levels. It is a cliché episode that makes me so angry and frustrated whenever I watch it. So yes, it is definitely a DISGUSTING EPISODE. And yes, it also belongs to the ANIMATED ATROCITY TRASH. The only things I like about it are Marmalade herself, Ceviche at the end saying I'm not your boyfriend, which is Chowder's quote by the way, and my favorite part, Mung and Truffles' hilarious cameo, which is a fourth wall joke by the way, but besides that, this episode is absolutely horrible, and I think it's a little more worse than She Boodles. It's that horrible. Alright guys, last episode of Season 2. Episode 40B, Tofu Town Showdown. Chowder discovers that Schnitzel had a previous life as a samurai bodyguard. The outfit Schnitzel wears in this episode looks similar to the bride's outfit in Kill Bill, and it was also inspired by an iconic outfit worn by martial arts artist Bruce Lee. Hooray for trivia! Anyway, the highlight of the episode is the flashback based on Schnitzel's past. It's really interesting and fun to watch. Even the entire episode is fun and interesting to watch. And for all those reasons, I would consider it a good episode. The plot's a lot of fun, with the addition with some good, solid, funny jokes here and there. And that is every episode of Chowder Season 2 reviewed. Alright, let's take a look at the scoreboard. So, there were 29 delicious episodes, 1 average episode, and 8 disgusting episodes. Judging by the number of meh and bad episodes of this season, I'm pretty shocked by the fact that there is only one meh episode. Only one! Anyway, well... The good episodes still outnumber the meh and the bad episodes, but however, if you have more bad episodes than meh, and if there's a lot of them, then it just goes to show you that this season is not as good as season 1. But despite that, I still call season 2 a good season. Speaking of good, it's time for my top 5 episodes. Number 5, The Trouble with Truffles. Number 4, Pink the Town. Number 3, The Brain Freeze. Number 2, The Deadly Maze. And number 1, and no one's surprised, hey hey, it's Kanishmas. 
these episodes to me are that good and are just great and fantastic. Now it's time for my bottom five episodes. Number five, My Big Fat Stinky Wedding, P.U. Number four, She Boodles, just mean spirited at its finest. Number three, Affair to Remember, again, nothing but mean spiritedness. Number two, Kid Schnitzel, gross. And number one, The Lolly Stops. These episodes, in my opinion, would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chowder and Mr. Fugu. That's how bad they are. They all belong in this trash right here, and that is where they are going to stay. The debatable bad episodes, however, belong in this. Nice, huh? Anyway, that's it for Season 2. Tune in for Season 3 because I am going to work on it right now because it is a really short season it only has nine episodes and this season is in my opinion the most interesting season to talk about because its episodes is actually are actually interesting so yeah this is Pit Rocks signing out